Hey, how's it going? It's Joseph here. Today we are reviewing three different navigation workflows inside of Enscape and let's get to it. So the lineup for the three things would be first the keyboard and a mouse that you normally have that you don't need to purchase additionally and the second one would be the 3d mouse and it is manufactured by 3d connection and they have various different models sometimes they have more buttons than uh, these two here but this is the one that we're looking at it's a wireless version i'll leave a link in the description for you guys to follow this is a well-known device for 3d modeling community however i'm gonna see how this suits the navigation system of the Enscape. And the third would be the Xbox One controller, uh, which is often used for VR workflows, but this works pretty well for the Enscape, so we're gonna explore that. So out of these three things, you may or may not need additional driver installed. I'm running on Windows 10. Obviously, keyboard and mouse is already installed and operating, so I don't need additional drivers. However, I found that uh, this 3D mouse needs most amount of driver installation as well as the prep. I'm not going to go over the prepping methods, but I'll show you a little bit of driver installation windows just so that you get a feel of what goes on. Basically, you download a driver, double click it next next okay sort of thing and then it should be done and one of the downside is actually this driver always runs in the background of all the programs therefore if you're kind of concerned about the resources that may be one of the downside of using this as far as the driver goes Xbox controller seems to be very very easy. If your machine has a Bluetooth like I do, then it should be a breeze. Um, you don't need any additional drivers downloaded or installed, it's just going to recognize the device right away. If your machine does not have Bluetooth enabled, then, then there's a dongle that comes with the device that you can just connect to your computer and have it going. Therefore, making the device work is a bit easier with Xbox controller versus the 3D mouse. So to test everything, we're going to launch Enscape on a SketchUp model. This is a model that I have already used in the last tutorial. However, it is slightly modified, probably not that noticeable. It's got some space here for me to navigate around as well as some site features that are around. So I'm going to be using this specific model to test this and let's fire up Enscape to test. Okay, I got Enscape going. I can press H to turn these keyboard buttons on and off. So on the fly mode, I'm able to use shift and a control to go fast and faster and E and Q to go up and down. WASD, typical moving methods of PC gaming, space to toggle fly walk and M to show the minimap that comes up here. You can look around with the left mouse button and then right click to orbit and shift time of the day if I want to. Now just to demonstrate, I can go in, I'm pressing W right now, shift to go slightly faster. And if I press control, it goes even faster. And I can go up, E, down with Q, A, left, D to right, and S to back off. And then space, I'll jump into walk mode, which I will be dropped to the eye level. Okay, and I use a left mouse button to look around. So I need to go over there. However, there's a collision detection when you're in a walkthrough mode. So I'm not able to actually go over this parapet wall. So I'm just gonna go back into fly mode by hitting space bar again, and then just go through so I can just go in further if I want to and I can show minimap by hitting M. And actually, if I want to hide this bar altogether, then I can just hit H and it goes away. And I can just go in closer and closer by hitting Control, Shift, look up. And I can also orbit by right mouse button. So those controls are available for you with keyboard and a mouse setup, quite similar to the navigation in the PC gaming as well as a SketchUp navigation workflow. So it's quite easy to get used to. And the second candidate would be the 3D mouse. 
So with the 3D mouse, I leave this on my left hand and right hand to the normal mouse. The actual manufacturer was using it this way and I think it's meant to be used this way. It works quite well for me and I'm gonna stick to that way. So try and use it with your left hand. And once I turn it on, it doesn't show any additional message on the screen. However, because this is a wireless version, I can turn on and off. And if I do turn it on, the LED light comes on and letting me know it's connected and I am good to go. So Enscape, there's no additional message that shows up. However, if I move the device, then I'm able to move front and back and look sideways as well. I can use this mouse to move forward by just moving this dial all the way forward and backwards by just moving this dial backwards, left and right. And I can just rotate this thing to look around and then twist it up to look up and down and I can use combination of all of those. My challenge would be to use all of that axis in a way that I want to control it to move and the challenge would be to follow this spiral staircase and I can do that by doing so. Notice the little bit of stutter Depending on your machine's uh, capabilities in terms of graphics card, you may notice some stutter like this in some cases. So that's all available with the 3D mouse. Because you can move very smoothly within space, it's a lot easier to navigate through as well as make sense of your navigation. Uh, whether you're actually in a human eye level or not, it's much easier to navigate through. And with some experience, this will be very, very easy and flawless movement is possible with this. Okay, so the third candidate would be the Xbox controller, which you just use this button to connect. And if I hold that down, it just turns on and it should be recognized with your machine. And then you'll notice that your Enscape window has changed. You can see the buttons that are down here and that has changed to Xbox controller layout. You can move in and out with this dial here. The next button for the different views that way with this button here. And then show and hide the instruction with this just like so. And look around with the dial that is here. And then toggle, fly and walk. I get dropped onto the ground and you can change time of the day by going noon and midnight with these two buttons and you can fly up and down as well as just time of the day with the buttons that are up here and that is over here so you can use that to just kind of float around as well as walk around the space um, in this case i it has a collision detection because I'm, I'm in a walk through mode and I'm able to look up and down. If you ever played any console games, this might be a lot easier for you, but it does take some time in getting used to because I never played much of a console game. And I'm able to use press A to go fly mode and then look up and shoot up and then just go forwards to just kind of look around the space. And another challenge would be to actually go around the staircase. Let me just toggle on the walk mode and I can just kind of follow through the staircase this way. Because there's a collision detection I'm just gonna toggle on the fly mode again to just kind of break through that and there you go so all in all all of these three methods have pros and cons keyboard and a mouse um, it's great because it's already connected to you and it's always available for you therefore you can use it however some movements can be kind of clunky in terms of limited access control and for the presentation you want to just kind of freely move the space rather than just being jittery here and there the keyboard and a mouse has those downside however when it comes to smooth navigation 
animation floating around the space without much of a limit. And then 3D Mouse wins the case because with a simple dial you're able to just float around the space really smooth and you're gonna look a lot more professional that way. So I typically use that for presentation purpose in comparison to other methods. And when it comes to Xbox controller, it's very versatile. It has key controls in order to change time of the day and then change the fly and walk mode. However, you're gonna look like you're playing a game as opposed to working. So that's something that's kind of difficult to go through in a sort of a professional environment and you're gonna get comments like uh, you're playing a game versus um, actually working and Enscape team has nicely integrated button layout in their program as well so that's gonna be a lot easier to pick up especially if you have played uh, console games before for me um, I find myself going through all of these uh, three things uh, depending on the situation and I thought I should sort of introduce it to you as well okay that's it for today and if you found the information useful please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to continue watching this type of videos and I will see you next time. Thank you.